Only on CBS 6, we've seen the tragedies. When crowds panic, disaster follows. People were unable to get out. This local college student says he's created a life-saving exit strategy. You're dealing with human life here. Be the first to learn how small changes could make a big difference. In the models, it's, it's absolutely worked. Tonight at 11 on CBS 6 News. Well, anytime you go into a crowded public space like a nightclub or a movie theater, do you take a moment out to figure out just how you'd get out if there were a fire? A Skidmore College student who spent three years researching fire exits for an Intel science research project has just had his findings published in a fire safety journal. And what Ben Roberts found was that the size of the room has less to do with your getting out safely than the size and number of exits. He calls the phenomenon blocked exit syndrome and says you'd be a lot safer in a room filled with 100 people if there were not just more doors but wider doors. 500 people crammed into a small Chicago hip-hop club when someone tried to stop a fight by using pepper spray. It should have cleared out the place, but the partiers inside became trapped at the bottom of the stairs by a logjam of people at a single exit door. 21 people died and 57 were injured as people clawed and climbed over bodies to get out. Three days later, the rock band Great White set off fireworks as part of its act in Warwick, Rhode Island, starting a ceiling fire at the station nightclub. Again, a stampede to get out alive. This time, 98 people died and 180 were injured. There's actual footage of people on top of one another, crushed against one another. Those tragedies made a big impression at the time on Ben Roberts because of something that had happened a year earlier during the big blackout in Manhattan. My mom, who works in the City Corp Center, she said that it took them two and a half hours to get out of the building. Had that been a fire, had that been a, a real emergency, I mean, that would be be completely unacceptable. And that led the Skidmore freshman to come up with what could be a life-saving exit strategy. Robert started playing with theoretical computer models of exits, evacuation times, and people, and found there's a limit to how many people one exit door can handle in an emergency. People will generally, uh, they will exit out of the same entrance that they went through and they'll exit out of that area so just widening exits widening already existing exits will substantially uh, uh, increase the ability for people to survive Roberts put his theory to the test this computer model shows a single exit in a room with 30 people 10 seconds able to get out very very simply but any more than 30 people and it gets very dangerous right now they're all fighting um, for the doorway as you can see but uh, it's blocked. Put 50 people in the room and it takes six times as long for them to escape. So that showed me that the exit itself had a capacity for people, not the room itself. And it leads me to block exit syndrome. Which is simply high occupancy in a small doorway. It takes 64 times as long for 70 people to leave as it does for 30. Now watch what happens when you add a second exit. Everyone effectively gets out. Now, Robert's solution is simple. Either add more exits and or widen the doorways. Simple, but probably not cheap, since the 36-inch doorway is standard in most construction. But when you look at what happened at the Station Nightclub or E2 in Chicago, the price seems small. The fire chief on, on, on staff said he actually had to extract people from the doorways with crowbars and other instruments. I wanted to get you some definitive response from area fire officials, but two chiefs who looked at Ben Roberts' computer models decided they did not want to be a part of the story. They both say he has some good ideas, but they also both share the same concerns that he did not take into account the impact of alcohol or panic on the behavior of the people who were trying to get out. And they both mentioned what Roberts himself brought up, that people tend to try and leave the way they came. So extra exits might not change anything. And one chief also pointed out that there's no way of knowing from his computer model what would happen if someone in a wheelchair were to try to approach the same exit. Now, Robert says he hopes someday to be able to factor in the human element, but this started out, he says, as simply a way to make a room safer. Hmm. I mean, no matter what, they could, more exits and wider exits couldn't hurt, right? No, I mean, it, it seems to be, you know, it seems to make a lot of sense. It, the problem is that it would be quite expensive mm -hmm. if all of a sudden the standard door had to be increased and everybody, you know, had to put new doors in, widen the doorways, et cetera. And I think maybe that's something that would, would have to be thought about a long time. Right, but you weigh the expense. Of well, that's it. I mean, there are happen. millions of dollars in, in lawsuits right. and insurance and, you know, the, the, the nightclub owners, uh, the station owners, uh, you know, going to jail. I mean, there's a lot at stake. Right. All right. Thanks. That was very interesting.